You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled, Next Gen SAP is Coming, But Is Oil and Gas Ready? One of the bigger digital shifts that will take place in the next decade will be the mass migration of oil and gas companies to the next generation of SAP. What's in store? In an earlier post, I outlined the history of ERP technologies, how they have evolved over time, their current state capabilities, and their readiness to move to a more digital world, and their makers' motivations to change. In summary, large oil and gas companies are now wholly dependent on these big ERP systems to run their businesses. These systems, though, were were designed for a world that no longer exists. Their internals were optimized for scarce processing power and storage, two computing resources that are now in ridiculous abundance because of cloud computing. ERP technology generally predated many of the things we take for granted in today's technology landscape. The internet, mobile devices, cloud computing, app stores, big data, and analytics. They are costly and difficult to maintain because of the huge range of databases and server technologies on which they have to operate. Limitations in ERP capabilities compelled oil and gas companies to write their own code directly into the ERP software, restricting the ability to upgrade the ERP systems. ERP publishers are acquisitive, but integrating those acquisitions into the fabric of the ERP system is costly and has not always been a priority. And despite the enormous range of capability in ERP systems, oil and gas companies have consistently felt the need to acquire and install countless numbers of other systems, leading to a huge portfolio of incompatible technologies all jostling for funds and attention. What SAP does matters to the oil and gas industry because so many companies run on SAP. Through their next generation solution, SAP aims to reset their technology for the world of the future. This has important implications for oil and gas customers, support staff, and technology providers. What's in SAP's future? Well, SAP has announced heaps of improvement to the solution, but there are a number of highlights that warrant mentioning. First is in-memory design. With compute horsepower so cheap and abundant, thanks to chip costs that have fallen basically to zero, the new design calls for the entire system to run in computer memory chips, rather than on disk drives. Disk drives have moving parts, fail occasionally, but most importantly, are slow. By eliminating the need to move data to and from disk drives, SAP will speed up the system quite dramatically. This new design also means a streamlining of the data tables, too which will eliminate redundant data whose purpose was to help optimize disk usage. The savings in space also create space for all kinds of new data, from sensors, for example. And some back office costs will disappear because of the pickup in speed and system responsiveness, and some processes will simply be reimagined so that they are daily rather than at month end. Next is the flat database design. When I was studying computer science in the 80s, database design theory emphasized minimizing redundant and duplicate data in the database. The reasoning at the time was that disk storage was costly, and a good design minimized storage needs. This carried a price, of course. Data would be stored in tables, like an Excel spreadsheet, but frequently key data that was closely related, say a well description and its monthly production, was stored in multiple tables. The solution was to join the tables together and create a third table when you needed, thus keeping disk storage low and using computer processing when you needed it. Sometimes this compute problem can consume hours of computer time trying to marry up big tables to produce the report needed. But in a world without computer limitations, why not eliminate all the myriad tables and have a simpler, flatter database design? It would be much faster to do reporting. Indeed, some previously impossible queries now become standard. Next generation SAP will have a new flat database design. Oil and gas users will be able to replace hundreds of slow and costly reporting procedures with new streamlined reports and queries. Analytics that might normally take place separately will be done in line as the process executes, allowing better and different decision making in the moment. Next key feature is cloud enablement. It's impossible to ignore the rise of cloud computing. It's much better and cheaper for technology companies to write their code for the cloud and a single database technology and have everyone access it via web browsers. Only one database to support, not six. Only two or three hardware devices, Apple, Android, and Windows. Only one technology stack, not 12. They can update the cloud version 
For everyone, the instant a problem appears or a new feature becomes available, no more lengthy wait time for an upgrade to happen. All the latest software solutions we have grown to love, think Amazon, Lyft, Airbnb, and Netflix, have this design. And most important, cloud software is easier to connect with other soft uh, software in the cloud. Integration doesn't fall to the customer to sort it out. You can see this play out in the way that Cloud Facebook accesses your cloud address book. Integration costs should therefore fall. Data centers can be shrunk, and the risk of having stranded technology will disappear. Next is the modern user interface. The user interface for legacy SAP is hard to learn for the casual and infrequent user. Unlike Uber or Google, oil and gas companies have to invest in training their employees to use the technology. Next generation will have a much lower learning curve and a modern, clean user interface. This will help oil and gas both cut training costs and leverage the kinds of nifty features now commonplace, like alerts, like buttons, suggestions, and auto-completed fields. Next feature will be mobile. More and more computing is via mobile. Indeed, the next great wave of digital innovation in oil and gas will come from better enablement of a mobile workforce. Mobile computing has its own challenges, of course, including what happens when you're out of range from the network. Legacy ERP design did not contemplate the possibility that the end user would be at one moment online and next offline. This changes with the new version. Oil and gas has lots of mobile workers and their equipment who are now offline. This innovation should open up lots of new, clever business models. Next is the Internet of Things. What about all the smart devices with built-in compute capability that are now appearing? Next generation SAP will be able to support the existence of these devices and incorporate them into work processes. The data these devices collect will finally be pulled into SAP to enable much better analytics. I would not be surprised to learn that my car of the future talks to SAP directly. Support for blockchain, a technology that will work well with the Internet of Things, will be embedded in the system. And finally, how about an app store? That would be sensible. Sometimes there are some capabilities that are just so specialized you have to have your own. How about an app store concept, where that secret sauce compute algorithm might find a home, where it can be tested and assured of compatibility? That's the equivalent to the GE model for the Predix platform. So why migrate? I would summarize the business case in pretty simple terms. Work will speed up. Data quality will improve. The cost of ownership, that is to say the support costs for SAP, will decline. Today's risk of ending up with a stranded but critical business system will disappear. Many modernizations that have been elusive, that is mobility, the Internet of Things, are suddenly within reach. The power of in-the-moment analytics is finally achievable. Businesses will be more nimble or able to embrace new innovations faster with less friction. And finally, next-generation business models for oil and gas will be possible. Most importantly, though, is the power that comes with the ability to reconfigure business on the fly to address opportunities and disruptions. A hurricane in the Gulf? What is going to be the impact on my supply chain, and what can we do right now to address it? A competitor has a problem? What can we do quickly to ramp up production to capture temporary volume? For some, the worry about the future of SAP support looms. SAP will no longer support all the existing technology versions past the middle of the next decade, which, for some, might trigger a move. Other companies who suddenly find themselves in a merger and maybe needing a new system quickly will decide that now is the time to move. And still others will find the pent-up demand of users wanting access to new technology or customers complaining about service shortcomings, a sufficiently compelling reason to migrate. Are there risks? Yes, and they are manageable. Engineering a big shift from one generation ERP solution to the next is a fraught endeavor. There's a lot of complexity in the change. It takes time and commitment, and it alters every company agenda until it's done. As with any technology, there is the challenge of being the first to adopt. Your organization will be the one to deal with unexpected bugs and system issues. Fortunately, there are a number of early adopters that are already in flight. But all the other risks from earlier similar transitions will reappear. Executive commitment, having available resources, adequate change readiness, appropriate support planning, the threat of budget overruns, and so forth. An important new risk is timing. 
there will simply not be enough skilled technologists able to undertake the mass migration if oil and gas industry waits until the last minute. Judging when to move, that is when costs are low and risks are manageable and resources are available, will be tricky. What does all this mean for the industry? Well, if you're on SAP now, get started with the migration. The middle of next decade is distressingly close, particularly since all other industries also have to migrate at the same time. Think three to four years to transition a big business. Another year of planning, a year to sort out budgets and time for a decision, suddenly is 2019. Next, if your business has many assets or business units, figure out an approach that makes sense. Do you start with an asset? Or do you change up the customer-facing elements of your system? Do you modernize the SAP internals? Or do you deploy some high-impact modules? If your company publishes some technology solution that has found a home in oil and gas working alongside SAP, you probably should be giving serious thought to redesigning your solution to an in-memory design or a cloud solution. Otherwise, you're going to be on the radar as so last decade. If your company sells hardware to oil and gas, you might want to figure out how your asset data now fits with the customer's new SAP platform. Fit in and play along. If your oil and gas job, however, involves taking data from one part of SAP, fiddling around with it in Excel for reporting, or feeding it back into SAP, it's time to rethink your job choice. And if you're in IT and you provide SAP support, it's probably time to get retrained on the new technology. S4 HANA skills look like they will be in very high demand for quite some time. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitalorgas.com.